In part 1, we discussed the legitimacy of using Element 115 as a fuel source, and calculated the effective range of the Thunder Gun, so go watch that if you haven't yet. Onward with part 2. Now let's calculate the force the air from the Thunder Gun is exerting on its target. The gun does not produce a consistent reaction out of whatever it hits. It varies greatly based on where it's aimed, the position of the target, and the overall environment. Sometimes enemies go flying off in a nice parabolic arc, while other times they just fall to the ground. But for the most part, a very typical launching distance like this one will work for the calculations. This guy's center of mass is launched 92 centimeters horizontally and 100 centimeters vertically, measured using the average chest width for a soldier in the 1960s, as well as about 150 centimeters backwards. This works out to a total distance launched of 202 centimeters, calculated with the 3D distance formula over the course of 6 frames, or 0.1 seconds. So acceleration, assuming it's constant, which it totally isn't due to gravity and whatnot, but we controlled for that as much as possible by using a short time frame. But the soldier hit something a little, so that might have thrown off the numbers a little bit, and, uh, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the answer. The acceleration is 40,400 centimeters per second squared, or 1,325.46 feet per second squared for us Americans, which is 904 miles per hour squared acceleration. Going back to metric, the average acceleration of a car is between 3 and 4 meters per second squared, and this is just over 115 times that much. The fatal impact acceleration for a human is said to be about 65 Gs, but this varies quite a bit depending on age, sex, and duration of the g-force experienced. Our soldier here experienced 41 Gs of acceleration, which is of course theoretically survivable. So these people aren't necessarily dying from the initial burst of acceleration they experience. Well, some of them might. So what are they dying from? Let's take a look at the force being exerted here. For that, let's jump back into the zombies mode. A good estimate of a German soldier's weight during World War II is 175 kilograms. But since we're talking about zombies, the number is probably a little less than that. Those maggots have trimmed a little weight off, I'd imagine. So this means about 174 kilograms per zombie, with a total possible amount of 42 zombies on the map. That puts the total mass at 7,308 kilograms, being moved at 404 meters per second squared. So using the force equals mass times acceleration equation, that means the Thunder Gun exerts a total force of 2,952,432 newtons. To put this in perspective, the thrust of the space shuttle's main engine at takeoff is 1,800,000 newtons, and the mass of a blue whale, the heaviest animal ever, is about 100,000 more newtons than that. So basically, the Thunder Gun is slapping the equivalent of one and a half blue whales across those ugly Nazi faces. So with that, and the fact that they're hitting other random surfaces at high speeds, I can't really blame them for dying to an air ball. Since we now have the force that the air can exert, we can come up with the pressure that the air is under inside the Thunder Gun. Now this number will be a little imprecise, because we only know the force the air exerts once it's outside the gun, but this number should be less than the force within the gun, so whatever pressure value we get should actually be less than the true value which is a little scary. Pressure equals the amount of force per unit area. Since we know the force of the air, dividing this by one half the area of the magazine, remember, the magazine contains two rounds, gives us the air pressure. So what's the area of the magazine? Using the holder's thumbnail as reference, which is 1.5 centimeters wide generally, I calculated the diameter and the width and using the equation for the area of a cylinder, I found it to be 833.6 centimeters squared. So the pressure is 70,835,701 pascals, or 699 times the pressure of the atmosphere. That's the pressure at 7,000 meters down in the ocean. So quite a lot, but not actually that bad, and fairly realistic if you ask me. Now let's talk about recoil. My initial thought was that this thing would have so much recoil, it would obliterate the user. So let's find out. 
We can calculate recoil if we know the amount of heat generated while firing, since recoil is basically the leftover energy of the system, where heat would help reduce quite a bit of it. We can use those handy dandy gas laws to find out the temperature of the air. Oh gas laws, the bane of so many chemistry students, will they ever learn? The formula is pressure times volume equals the number of moles times the universal gas constant times pressure, which is what we want, so let's rearrange the equation like so. The only other thing we don't know at this point is the moles of air, which is simply the amount of air in unit moles. If we assume that all the air being shot out hits the target and transfers its momentum into the target, we can find the mass of the air using F equals MA. The force it exerts is this big number, which equals M times 762.5, a number which I got by doing the frame method with this guy to see how long it takes the air to reach him and finding the air acceleration from that. Notice, this is only a little bit faster than the target flies off, so the mass must be very close to that to explain the amount of force. This means that the mass of air comes out to exactly 5,163 kilograms. That makes no sense at first, but when you really think about it, that's the only way the Thunder Gun makes sense. That gives the air used by the Thunder Gun a density of 4,225,041 kilogram per meter cubed. That's about the density of a supermassive black hole, which actually has a surprisingly low density. Quick fact about black holes. The more massive it is, the less dense it has to be to still have an escape velocity greater than light speed. Our air ammo here wouldn't actually be a black hole, since it would have to have a radius 1.3 million times smaller than an electron's radius. Very, very small. So no black holes are forming here, thank goodness, because I heard they're pretty unhealthy. Still not convinced that I didn't just butcher the number somewhere along the line? But I really do think these numbers are right. It's just that the Thunder Gun acts completely unrealistically if we assume normal air density. The only way the Thunder Gun could work in real life is with an air density of over 4 million kilograms per meter cubed. In real life, air hitting you at high speeds just isn't going to rip off your limbs and send dozens of people flying, at least not at the speeds depicted in game. So the only way it could work is for the air to be much, much heavier. So the number of moles in the gun comes out to 145,846. Plugging in all the variables, we get the temperature of the air equaling 0 0.07137 Kelvin. That is really cold. If you touched it, it would instantly kill any cells it comes in contact with. A huge blast of it would definitely be enough to freeze someone faster than you can say hash slinging nerf herder. So heat wouldn't contribute much at all to recoil dispersion. Plugging the numbers into an online calculator to find recoil energy and here I assumed the Thunder Gun weighs 20 pounds, it comes out to 35,865,983 joules of energy in the recoil. That's the energy of 8.6 kilograms of TNT going into your shoulder every time you fire the gun. That's plenty enough to obliterate you. I guess I was right about that, huh? So not only can it kill loads of zombies in interesting and unexpected ways, it'll also blow the user to bits. Oh. And its fuel source, Element 115, in reality would blow up and kill everyone in the vicinity with all its radiation. Let's just make a convenient list here of all the ways it could kill you. The deadly radiation from Element 115. A possibly nuclear level explosion caused by having all that super heavy material in one place. Blowing people away with 41 Gs into skull crushing materials like walls. The force of a fully loaded Boeing 747 going at 9 meters per second into you. Ammo so dense it would rip off your arms if you were to carry it. Lots of sub-1 Kelvin air punching you in the face. Enough recoil to blow you to bits. And you can't forget about those commies. They'll get you when you least expect it. Oh, and of course when you get taken down right after getting the Thunder Gun. The bestest gun of all the zombies. Because your HDMI cable fell out because it just wanted to, I guess. So you throw your controller as hard as you can across the room. But you didn't know your sister was there, so you gave her a terrible nosebleed but she's a hemophiliac, so she bleeds to death, and your mom kills you too out of anger. So her life now feels empty without kids in the house, so she gets a divorce, which causes your dad to binge eat with massive anxiety, so he dies three years later from a heart attack. The Thunder Gun is truly a terrifying weapon. It'll kill you in so many different ways, it makes the wasteland jealous. And it just makes no stinking sense. 
but I think I've thought of a way it could work. All we need is a slice of bread with butter on one side and a cat on the other, a tall building on some kind of platform, a turbine, Ant-Man, a circus full of monkeys who know how to dismantle an atomic bomb, Fat Boy or an equivalent if available, 1,000 pounds of chicken nuggets, Waldo, Khaleesi and one of her dragons, an infinity stone, it doesn't matter which one, the coordinates to the 9-11 tapes, and two scoops of ice cream. Now, what you need to do is roll it up in a big ball, get it moving down a steep hill, and shove it up your butt. Thanks for watching. And if you want to see more content from me, you know what to do. Yeah!